Hello and welcome to this new lecture on compressible flow. In this lecture, we'll start to answer the question regarding the compressibility of a given fluid. So, how much easy is to compress a given fluid? Or in other words, how much volume change we can have due to some pressure change applied on this fluid? So, to answer this question, we will uh, start by defining a property called the bulk modulus of elasticity. So, the bulk modulus of elasticity, we call it B, it is equal to minus a differential change in pressure, dP, divided by a differential change in volume with respect to an initial volume. And here we have a minus sign since we know that an increase in the pressure will result uh, in a decrease in the volume. So, if you take a for example, a container with a fluid occupying a volume V and at a pressure P. And if the pressure applied increases by an amount equal to dP, so we'll have the pressure is equal now to P plus dP, we know that the fluid will experience a decrease in its volume, a decrease by an amount equal to dV. So the new volume will be equal now to V minus dV. So an increase in the pressure will result to a decrease in the volume. So that's why we have this minus sign. Now for a given mass of a fluid, we know that the mass is equal to rho into V. And if you differentiate this equation, you can have zero is equal to rho dV plus V d rho. And if you divide this equation by rho V, you will have dV over V plus d rho over rho. So now minus dV over V is equal to d rho over rho. So looking at this equation, we know that a decrease in the volume will result to an increase in the density. Now we can write B as dP instead of minus dV over V, we can write as d rho over rho. So now we have an expression relating the bulk modulus to the pressure change and the related uh, density change. So to give you an idea about some uh, magnitude for the bulk modulus of elasticity, uh, let's consider B for water, for example, at atmospheric conditions, it is equal to approximately 21,000 atmosphere. And let's say we want to decrease the volume of water by an amount equal to 1%. So minus dV over V is equal to 1%. So to decrease the volume by an amount of 1%, 1% decrease in volume, we need to increase the pressure by an amount equal to 210 atmosphere. So this is very easy to obtain. You simply multiply this B by 1% by 0 0.01, so we'll have 210 atmosphere. Comparing this to B of air, for example, at atmospheric condition, B of air is equal to one atmosphere. So similarly, if you want to decrease the volume by an amount equal to 10%, to 1%, excuse me, you simply need to increase the pressure by an amount equal to 0 0.01 atmosphere. So looking at these two values, we can deduce that it is very easy to change the volume of air when compared to water. So we need simply to increase the pressure uh, by 0 0.01 atmosphere for air compared to 210 atmosphere for water. So uh, obviously we know from experience that gases are much easier to compress than liquids. And we can say similarly that liquids are much easier to compress than solids, for example. Now, since we're talking about compressible flow, so when we hear the word flow, uh, we can imagine a fluid in motion. So in this lecture, we will try to develop a criterion uh, for the compressibility of a fluid in motion. So to do this, let's consider a fluid moving at a velocity v. And here we're talking about internal flow. So flow, for example, a fluid flowing at a velocity v inside a pipe 
or inside the duct. We're not talking about external flow. And we can say that the order of change of delta P of this fluid can be approximately equal to the order of its dynamic pressure, half rho V square. And since we know that the bulk modulus of elasticity B is, can be approximated as delta P, the change in pressure, divided by a change in density, delta rho over rho. So we can say that delta P in this case is equal to B into delta rho over rho. So let's substitute this uh, delta P by B into delta rho over rho. This is approximately equal to the order of half rho V squared. So taking B to the other side, we'll have the order of change in density, delta rho over rho, is approximately equal to the order of half rho V square over the bulk modulus. Now, to continue, before continuing uh, this analysis, we will define the speed of sound. So the speed of sound in, a, in the fluid me medium that we're considering here, let's call it C, is equal to the square root of B over rho. So the square root of the bulk modulus of elasticity divided by the density of the fluid. And of course, in the next lecture, I will prove for you this uh, expression. However, let's accept this equality for now. And we can say uh, now that C square is equal to B over rho. So let's replace uh, B uh, here in this ex expression by rho C square. So we will have the order of a change of the density, delta rho over rho, is approximately equal to the order of half rho V square over B, where B is equal rho C square. So we can simplify rho now. Now looking at this ratio of V square over C square, so the velocity of the fluid is squared divided by the speed of sound squared. So we have a ratio of two velocities. So obviously this is a dimensionless number and it is a very important dimensionless number and we call it the Mach number. So the Mach number MA is defined as the velocity of the flowing fluid divided by the speed of, uh, speed of sound in the, uh, in the uh, related this, uh, fluid medium. And now we can say that the order of delta rho over rho is approximately equal to the order of half Mach square. Now for the fluid to be considered incompressible, so to consider incompressible flow, that means that the change in the density delta rho over rho is very small, much less, uh, uh, much less than one. And uh, we need to define some values and actual values to say that the change in the density is negligible. So how much, uh, how much small uh, is the small, if we want to say in, in this word. So, so what is so small? Is it delta rho over rho less than 5%, 10%, 2%? So we will accept that the variation in density is negligible when delta rho over rho is less than or equal to 5%, 0.05. So 5% is our threshold uh, to consider that the variation uh, in density can be neglected. So above 5%, percent, we will say, okay, that the variation in density are important and the incompressible flow assumption is no longer valid. So uh, writing this, we can say now that half uh, Mach square is less than or equal to 5%. So now the Mach number is less than or equal to 2 times 0.05. So radical 2 times 0.05, which is the Mach number is less than or equal to 0 0.3. So when the Mach number is less than or equal to 0 0.3, we can say that the assumption regarding incompressible flow is valid. Now, based on the Mach number, we can classify compressible flows also. So, for example, when the Mach number is less than 1, we classify the, the flow as subsonic flow. So subsonic flow, when the flow velocity is smaller than the speed of sound. So this is considered subsonic or less than uh, sonic 
velocity. So less than the sonic velocity, it means that the flow is flowing at a uh, velocity smaller than the speed of sound. So when the Mach number is equal to 1, it means that we have sonic flow. So the fluid is flowing at a velocity exactly equal to that, uh, to that of the speed of sound. When the Mach number is greater than 1, we have supersonic flow. Supersonic flow, it means that the fluid is flowing at a velocity greater than the speed of sound. And also we can add this uh, criterion here when the Mach number is smaller than or equal to 0 0.3, we have incompressible flow. So, of course, when the Mach number is less than or equal to 0 0.3, this can be included in the subsonic flow condition. So, this just to, to put more details. So, when the Mach number is greater than 0 0.3, this is compressible flow, and if it is also less than 1, this is subsonic flow, so subsonic compressible flow, if you want to say. When the Mach number is smaller than or equal to 0 0.3, this is subsonic incompressible flow. Uh, so, in the next lecture, what we want to do, we want to uh, talk uh, more about the speed of sound, and we want to prove this equation that C is radical of B over rho. And also, we want to develop an expression for the speed of sound uh, related to the uh, to the properties of ideal gases because we're interested mainly in uh, uh, gas flow because as as we saw earlier that gases are more uh, prone to to change in volume or a change in density when we have some pressure change more than uh, liquids and more than solids so that's why we will be more interested in developing an expression for the speed of sound uh, in uh, gas medium. So let's see how to do this in the next lecture.